sorry about the um, reminder for the wrong time. I guess the reminder is for when the record go when the record goes up like the like this. What we're doing now. Um, can I also thank you, Ati Ozita, for noticing that I messed up with the reminder. <laughs> um, hi guys. Can um, someone please send me a thumbs up to tell me that you can hear me, please? I can barely hear myself because Coco is sleeping next to me and she's snoring so loud. Thank you very much. Hey, it's Wami. I'm getting nervous seeing like other people here. <laughs> Okay, I guess, yeah, I wonder um, if, I think the topic of the joint issues, which we're talking about today, is quite a prevalent one that gives you guys quite a lot of sleepless nights, and um, there are such easy solutions, I'm quite excited to get into it. Oh my god, okay. Oh, so many nice people. Okay. Hi. Okay, I have my notes right here. So if I uh, look right next to the to the screen, that's because I'm cheating right here with my notes, so I don't get confused, and so I, especially so I don't confuse you. <laughs> Our mom only gives us one treat, do. Yeah. I feel like um. It's good to have that worry, right? Just oblivious. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you want to register a complaint? Yeah, we should. We sh we should definitely offer like an anonymous um, self help group for puppies that don't get enough treats. And I feel like the adopted ones and the rescued ones have the highest standards. At least, that's what happens in my house. So I think um, that will be Coco will be taking all the complaints, and then uh, um, I think that that should be taken forward urgently. And then also I will start talking now because um, because let's figure out some ways to get your puppies some more treats under the name of health and medicine. I think that would be right in their favor. And to clear the question right away, um, dehydrated or raw, it depends very much what preparation is best for your pet, depending on, you know, their gut health and everything. Not, not every dog or every cat can eat raw food without transitioning there slowly. So um, it depends very much on your individual pet, what's better. The nutrition content always is the, the most authentic and original obviously and raw but um, dehydrated freeze-dried um, any of these things are also good ways to um, like retain a lot of nutrients if it's carefully dried of course and um, otherwise if you don't want to feed raw and don't have dehydrated also you can always make bone broth which uh, collects a, good, a lot of the nutrients that are inside the feed. Um, <laughs> all right so Let's, we'll talk about chicken feed later on, of course, um, but let's try to get into the topic and then I hope that I will have some time today, actually a whole more, more like 10-15 minutes, to actually address your questions. For me to notice uh, or like um, have the questions right there, it would be great if you could like send them at the end so that they're right there on the screen and not, um, you know, get lost in the notification thingy, you know, I'm I'm like really not good with like technical stuff and Instagram is technical stuff to me. So let's get into this. Um, um, yeah, so one out of four dogs over the age of a year actually nowadays is diagnosed with some th sort of joint issues, arthritis or something else. Um, so since nature doesn't kind of create something with a default um, issue, I think we'll 
um, hopefully be able to find some of the reasons, for, of the common reasons for these joint issues being so prevalent today so that we can avoid um, our pets from having joint issues and spread the word in the best case. Um, yeah, so joint issues obviously can be genetic. So, um, you know, breeds like Goldens or German Shepherds, Rottweiler and um, other of the large breeds often um, have joint issues and that, you know, can't be reversed, but we can work on it more to that later. But if you do decide to buy a dog, then please go and look at the parents, look at the mom, look at the dad, like try to make sure that they are healthy, that they're being fed well, that they're being kept well. And like, you know, um, the genetic background should be checked, of course. Best thing to do, of course, would be to adopt an indie, which, you know, don't have any by default issues. Um, anyway, so we can definitely work on any like degenerative joint issues, on uh, genetic predispositions, on joint issues that already have happened. It doesn't matter at what stage your, um, your dog or cat actually is. It just matters uh, to understand which part of the joint and of the body you have to feed and how to do that in order to help them maintain whatever is there, um, whether that's healthy uh, or whether that is something um, that still has some improvement to be made. Sorry, I have to let Coco out the room one second. There you go, queen. She, she got me trained so well, man. Okay, um, so whatever it is, we can work on the joint health and on joint pain with food and without any uh, medication. Sorry again. Now I locked my dogs out. In our house, we lock the humans in. Not the dogs, I guess. Um, all right, so um, if you're wondering how can I help the joints if they're already damaged, if the cartilage is already gone or whatever. Uh, first of all, cartilage and all the cells in the body go through a constant break, um, um, process of breakdown and renewal. So by feeding the right nutrients, you're gonna be able to get right into that process and help new cells build healthily. Um, and then for damaged joints or maybe um, joints that are not in the right position where you have the option of surgery but maybe would like to avoid that, um, we can also work on working around the framework of the joint. So whatever is displaced can be kind of um, kept and maintained with the plan B, which is the ligaments and the tissue and everything around it. So again, whatever stage you're in, whether you have a healthy pet or you have uh, a pet with genetic issues, an older pet, it doesn't matter. There's always stuff you can do without um, a big effort with food. Just have to know how. Um, one thing I'd like to address right away is about large puppy breed food. Please stay away from that, especially if you have a large breed puppy, because um, these uh, foods that are made especially for large breed puppies have excessive amounts of calcium, like way, way, way too much calcium in many, many cases, of course, not all of them. Um, but the reason that they have like such excessive amounts of calcium, which can lead to calcification in the body, which can lead to these deposits landing in the cartilage of the joint, making them stiff and painful. Um, so to avoid this, uh, uh, sorry, this Excess calcium is in the large breed puppy food because often the manufacturers will add a lot of bone meal from, um, you know, food, human uh, food and meat production. There's waste material such as bones and they get made into a meal which is quite rich in minerals, but excessively rich in calcium and phosphorus. So um, to get like the values of the other minerals up, they have to add so much bone meals to avoid having to add the more pricey ingredient of meat. Um, so that you have, you just have excess amounts of calcium. I hope that wasn't too confusing what I just said. It enrages me, so I get like excited about it. Uh, anyway, so large breed puppy food is not uh, good for large breeds. Just keep that in mind, please. Um, Let's quickly look at the way that uh, <clears throat> the joints work so that we know what we're dealing with. Uh, joints are basically the connection between two bones, like you will have 
like one long limb and that for in order for that to move you need to have a connection you need to have a you know like a, a break basically and then you need to have a connection that, that keeps these two part of the bone together in a, a steady way but also in a flexible way so that um, these bones can move individually um, and yeah without harming each other or without any strain on the point where they meet um, in order for that to happen there's a thin layer a layer of cartilage on top of the joint which keeps renewing and which makes sure that there's no friction when the joints are moving along each other um, cartilage does not contain any blood vessels um, nutrition is actually supplied to the cartilage by diffusion this is kind of a complicated process and we're not going to get more into it it's just it's a com more complicated process than the bloodstream supplying the nutrients um, to the tissue so um, what we take away from that is cartilage repairs at quite a slow rate compared to other cells and other parts of the body uh, that means we have to consistently feed the nutrients that cartilage actually needs to keep the joints healthy because it constantly you know is bit by bit renewing itself and it takes some time so you need you know some quantity of time and and nutrients to go in there before you can see bettering um this is of course maybe a little bit discouraging because it means healing joint issues with food does take some time if they are acute um we can manage the pain with food as well though so give it just a moment more um so anyway we consistently have to feed the cartilage um meaning that it takes a while to fix issues but on the other hand it also takes a while for the issues to get severe because it takes a while for the cartilage to wear down and all of that so by intervening as long as uh, stuff is still okay or as long as this dog is still healthy and just feeding certain nutrients you can make sure to not run into this issue where you have to go to acute measures and have to weigh between um, maybe a surgery or pain medication or food or whatever. Um, of course, because old age can bring certain issues like arthritis and stuff. Um, but yeah, by constantly feeding the right nutrients, we make sure that kind of these parts of the body are always rebuilt with new uh, nutrition and with a uh, good nutrition so that basically the joints can stay healthy and in the best case, never ache. And if so, then, you know, at an older age, we get kind of more calm anyway. So maybe the jumping um, that's not possible for a senior is less painful than a jumping that's not possible for a puppy. Um, yeah, so of course, as always, we have to talk about the gut again today because the gut just is insanely important for the pet's immune system and the whole body. So um, with an unwell gut, we can't heal the joints naturally, basically. And also you come to me for like dietary advice. So of course, I will talk about the gut. Um, we've spoken about the gut in many ways before. So you know that there's plenty of uh, like relations and connections and whatnot that come from the gut. But today I want to talk about clearly um, why your dog's joint issues could possibly be a, sim a symptom of leaky gut. And the reason is, <clears throat> I hope I'm not talking too fast. Um, the reason is that leaky gut syndrome happens when the lining of the digestive tract is damaged or weakened. Um, that happens when, you know, processed foods, grains, uh, too much of chicken and, and no balance, maybe, uh, whatever reason um, causes inflammation uh, or causes a disbalance in the gut bacteria, maybe too much yeast, whatever it is, when the, for whatever reason, the gut lining gets damaged, then um, it doesn't seal the gut anymore like it should. Typically, the gut lining is responsible for letting nutrients get out into the bloodstream and keeping food particles and toxins and byproduct and whatnot inside the stomach uh, where, you know, it gets uh, is an acid bath and gets digested in the ideal case. Anyway, when this gut lining is inflamed from the wrong diet or whatever, then particles from the gut can go into the bloodstream because the gut lining is leaky and this can lead to byproducts, toxins and whatever being in the bloodstream. Now that again can cause inflammation and now we're getting closer to the joint 
um, being related to this because the body will set off an inflammatory reaction when it detects something in the bloodstream that is not supposed to be there. So when the gut lining is leaky, stuff comes out, the body is like, hey, no, you're not supposed to be here. Let me send my emergency services. And then that shows in inflammation, trying to, you know, um, eliminate this intruder. So when the gut lining stays leaky, then more and more and more of these um, intruders are detected and inflammation can get excessive, especially when the gut lining isn't healed and more and more toxins or whatever go into the bloodstream. So there's a full, you know, um, overwhelmed body and system attacking itself. And the um, bloodstream being in a, in a constant inflamed process, then the immune system will also attack the joint lining. It will attack every cell in the body, basically. Um, it can be tricky to diagnose whether your dog's joint pain is because of a leaky gut or because of arthritis, because of a displacement, because of old age, because of, you know, just, you know, stepping onto something weirdly. Um, it's hard to figure out, but, um, you know, there's so many symptoms of leaky gut because this inflammation process in the body doesn't just affect the joints it also you know makes for UTIs it also makes for renal issues it makes for all kinds of um, things so the these things then get diagnosed by the, the vet often as dermatitis or as you know a certain allergy or something and it all kind of becomes a mess and the gut lining stays leaky because the inflammation wasn't addressed um, so instead of trying to um, talk more about kind of like how to figure out exactly um, why there is inflammation in the body or why the joint is hurting, um, I think we should just say a healthy gut is quite important and taking steps to improve your dog's gut is always a good idea, will always help the whole body. So just focusing on that and like adding some things that we'll talk about later to help your dog's gut will eventually always help the whole body. And if any joint issues were connected to leaky gut and you are working on the gut, then they might just dissolve. If not, if there's still joint issues, you might have some more work on your hands, but then at least you have a healthy gut, right? So nothing to lose in working on that. Um, then other signs to look out for whether your pet actually has a joint issue or not is beyond the obvious of course any changes in the way that they walk the you know less activity than normal even when they lick the joints from the outside um, any discomfort or pain when you touch it um, limping of course these are all signs that could point towards joint issues but also it could just be you know maybe they just like have an off day or maybe they're just you know in a bad mood or there's something else happening or just like a little you know a little bit off you know when you step somewhere and it's just feeling a little bit sore for a day or something so don't jump to conclusions always keep everything in context and um try to for example splooting also something that people are very weary of splooting can be a sign of joint issues and hip issues but splooting can also be a sign that your dog just like likes to chill in a weird way like it it's not nothing is definite you always have to kind of look at the whole picture see the changes compared to your own dog and not to an average. Um, trust your gut and just if you feel like something's wrong, then, you know, try to take a closer look and um, don't just, you know, ignore your gut feeling about something. Uh, regular slipping or difficulties jumping on something that they were able to before for some time is definitely a, 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 a big sign, a big warning sign for joint issues. Um, furthermore, look at the diet. If none of the nutrients that we're going to follow, uh, like that we're going to talk about uh, following, if none of them are in the diet, then it's quite likely that your pet will have joint issues at some point. So um, one more thing that's a little bit on the side here is about neutering and spaying, um, which is like a big topic and a big, you know, controversy and all of that. But um, I am all all for spaying and neutering, obviously. I work a lot with indies and, and uh, rescues. So um, there is one thing though, dogs grow and they have growth plates in their bones that have um, impact on the growth and on the hormonal growth and on several things I don't wanna get too deep into. But um, the conclusion of these um, growth plates in the bones is 
don't neuter or spay your dog before they're 18 or 20 months old when these growth plates have shut and have done their job. Then you can neuter and spay them, um, but don't spay and neuter too early because you can cause joint issues and other hormonal disbalances when you spay and neuter too early, but do talk to your vet about that. Um, clearly, they know best about these things. Just keep that in mind and maybe it's a question worth asking. Um, so now let's get back to my, my topic that I know. Uh, let's talk about how to feed your dog's gut lining, the joints, the tissues, the general immunity, um, how to make sure that they just jump and run free for as long as possible. Um, we'll get into the crucial nutrients for joint health and where to find them. And all of these things are for anybody, whether you feed a processed diet, a home-cooked diet, a raw diet, um, whether you feed more vegetarian or more meat-based, it doesn't matter. You can always um, pick something up, I hope. Uh, my last word on synthetic supplements, as always, I have to address because, um, you know, it's me. I have to talk about fish, the gut and synthetics. <laughs> um, so synthetic supplements, I'd really like you to stay away from, of course. Um, many manufacturers of these like synthetic things like Chondra Vet and whatnot, um, they they claim that the um, the nutrients in those syrups or tablets or whatever are natural or like derived from something natural, but they're basically made in a laboratory. Like that's how these things get in a bottle, and synthetic nutrients and all these derivatives and stuff that is not gonna nourish your pet the same way that nature would. Over time, they can clog the cell receptors because they're built differently and there's byproducts. Um, the it's just not the same as nature. So if you try to you know find out like which nutrients am i trying to feed here like i'm i have this um i have this um supplement that's from you know whatever medical thing and you look at the ingredients and you just check like if it says calcium or if it says chondroitin if it says whatever just go ahead and google which foods contain that and then see if that's something you can work with and giving your pet because it's always better right like it's always better to go for the fresh whole food variant that your pet's body can also you know naturally recognize and deal with so um it's just it's just a good idea and often it's also cheaper to go for real food nutrients you know there's vitamins and all these things that derive from like kind of somewhere faintly derived from food so let's try to go for the original not for the copy go for the nature's real stuff um one more thing to hopefully convince you maybe in that direction is that, um, for example, if you look at eggs, eggshells are um, made of calcium, right? Like I, I feel like everybody's heard that recently. You feed some eggshells and then you don't need to give your pet bone. It's not that easy because eggs are whole food sources. Like eggs are a complete food thingy that is not supposed to be taken apart. It's a whole balanced thing. And the eggshell that's um, rich in calcium or calcium carbonate that can only be absorbed, that calcium, if you have phosphorus in the right ratio, which bones also supply, of course. Um, but the egg yolk has elevated amounts of phosphorus. So if you separate the shell and the yolk, then you have too much phosphorus here and too much calcium here, can't be absorbed. But if you feed it all together in one, as an egg, as a complete thing, then nature's got you covered. Like nature knows how to balance stuff. Nature knows how to make things available to the body. So, um, you know, something as easy as an egg, even the shell membrane in the middle has, between egg and um, shell, has lots of nutrients. Like nature is always smarter than we are, so try to go for whole food things. Um, next thing, because um, you, you asked about green lip muscles in the diet for joint issues. Green lip muscles are a native muscle to uh, New Zealand where the Maori have used them for centuries to uh, in their food and as a medicinal thing. And they, um, mm, sorry, I was just reading a question. So uh, green lip muscles have been used by these indigenous um, folks for a really long time. And it's been found in studies that these people have a lot less arthritis and joint issues. So then there were studies done and indeed green lip muscles are great for joints. Um, there's many reasons. Uh, they actually work similarly to NSAIDs, just without side effects. Uh, they're rich in nutrients like chondroitin, omega-3 and its active forms. 
So like there's a lot of benefits of green, uh, green lipped mussels from New Zealand. But I have some thoughts on this topic I would like to address. Um, so I've been thinking about green lip mussels forever. And um, I was, I have made kind of a conscious decision neither to feed nor to sell them because, and I, I still think it's great if you do, I'm just going to say why I don't. Um, so the benefits of New Zealand green lip mussels are restricted to very, very few particular species of green lip mussels. Um, only one or two of these species have um, that specifically grow in New Zealand have the properties that we want. Like, for example, they need to have a fatty acid content of six to nine percent to even be uh, effective. And often manufacturers will offer different kinds of mussels and it's quite difficult to figure out which is the right kind. So even uh, we like on our boat, we've, uh, we've caught green lip mussels that look exactly like the ones in the pictures. And people were asking me like, why don't you put them on Canon India? And I can't because the New Zealand green lip mussels are different. They're in New Zealand, it's a different biosphere. It's a different thing. And the nutrients here will not be the same. So I just try to um, stick with stuff that's local and that's fresh. Um, just because we here in India, like especially here in the South, we have such a rich sea life and like it's, you know, I feel like I can get it fresh and unprocessed right here. So I don't have to go for the green lip muscle powder. So definitely if you can't get fish, if you have certain restrictions, if whatever is the situation and you want omega-3 and you want chondroitin and all of that, then New Zealand green lip mussels, the better, the higher the quality, the better is sure a good addition. I have my reasons why I don't feed it because I feel like there's easier, not easier, but more resourceful options for um, me and my situation. So um, yeah, just look at the nutrients that you need and look at what are the benefits of GLM and then try to figure out for yourself is which way is the one that you would like to include those nutrients by. Would you like to cook bone broth uh, made of fish heads? Would you like to get some dehydrated powder from Canada India? Or would you like to get the green lip mussels? Or would you like to feed fresh fish? It's all up to you. It's just about getting those nutrients in. Um, yeah, uh, another thing about the nutrient thingies, um, most of the joint supplements and glucosamine supplements and stuff are usually made of some derivative of shellfish and um, there are shells or crustaceans and stuff or shark cartilage. And um, again, I'm just asking you to please go for what's local and for what's really available. Like shark is always, you know, high in mercury and stuff. It's not a good, there's so many better cartilages fish that you could feed um, for for this joint support. And, you know, shellfish and, and shells, like that's so abundant in India. Like um, it would be great to try to go for the local variant and not for the supplement. But now I'm going to stop with that. Um, let's talk about the actual foods, let's talk about the positive stuff, what we can do uh, to heal the gut, to heal the joints, to, you know, make all of the stuff that we just talked about get better. And again, for everybody, um, it's nothing like it's not a big, it's not a big deal, actually, you just have to know what stuff to get. And then you go ahead and, and you'll you'll see the betterings. So um, let's just start with the nutrients. First one is collagen, one that we hear a lot in beauty commercials, I think uh, for lipsticks and lip plumpers and whatnot. Uh, collagen is an elastic protein. Um, it makes the skin flexible. It makes up about 80% of uh, muscles, tendons, uh, ligaments and other joint supporting tissue. Um, so collagen doesn't just protect the cartilage and hold the joint in place but it also um, protects the tendons and ligaments themselves against tears by building it strongly. And collagen you can find easily, you can find it in um, fish, in meat, in berries, in broth, and um, yeah, skin, for example, buffalo skin is about 75% collagen. So you don't need crazy amounts of any of these natural foods because they're so dense and bioavailable. Um, Next nutrient is chondroitin. Chondroitin is a main building block of cartilage and it helps the body repair damaged cartilage as well. 
Um, of, co of course, it also, you know, helps it uh, from breaking down too early and from getting uh, used up too quickly. Um, you can find chondroitin in Pizzle, in Trachea, and in cartilage, like in general, in our cow cartilage and fish cartilage, whatever it is. Um, next one is glucosamine. Glucosamine helps to form cartilage, again, with chondroitin in uh, Symphony. <laughs> Uh, glucosamine is a natural anti-inflammatory and it improves the mobility as it slows the aging process of the cartilage and you can find glucosamine in those little eggshell membrane that's between the egg and the shell that I mentioned again in tracheas and poultry feet and in bones of course and again to give you an idea of how much you would need um, one single chicken foot has about 450 grams of uh, glucosamine which is about one and a half times what an average dog would need, which I'm assuming is about 300 gram for a 20 kg dog. Um, a chunk of beef trachea, for example, if you get it from us, has about 1,800 milligrams of glucosamine. So one of that a week is basically enough for a medium-sized dog. Um, it's nothing crazy, all of it. Uh, then again, omega-3 fatty acids, I'd like to talk a little bit more about again, because it's so important. And kunai, because you asked for fish, um, of course, always the smaller ocean fish like anchovies, mackerel, sardine, um, sardine and mackerel being oily fish, um, anchovies, um, yeah, are, are very small, so it's very hard to debone them. So if you do feed um, home cooked, I would probably go for mackerels and get the filet and then cook a broth out of the heads and fins and stuff like that. Um, you can also go for, like don't go for fatty big fish like tuna or Atlantic salmon or sea fish, like all those really yummy ones. They have a bigger fatty part on the tummy and the fat kind of um, saves uh, pollutants better. So um, in order to avoid that, you go for the smaller fish that live shorter, then they, um, they have a different sort of like anatomy. So again, until we start on mackerel, then um, you can go for any kind of like lake and sweet water, like uh, lake and river fish, because um, even bigger ones are safe here because the mineral composure of seawater is different and like it's getting a bit too deep, but uh, the even the bigger fish in uh, lakes and rivers don't have the pollutants that many of the bigger ocean fish would have. And always make sure to know where your fish is caught, you know, and don't have it be done with those big nets that's horrible um if you can of course i mean that's yeah well anyway omega-3 right now that we're talking about fish um again down there fresh water salt water doesn't matter salt water smaller fish fresh water um it's pretty much up to you almost all fresh water fish are fine um omega-3 fatty acids why do we need the fish basically um <laughs> Omega-3 fatty acids are a powerful natural way to reduce inflammation. Um, they help maintain healthy joints and they can, can even help manage joint pain. Um, Omega-3 needs to be in its active form. That means in EPA and DHA. And um, that's easiest and bioavailable in animal protein. If you look at vegetable or plant matter or oils that have omega-3, it's by far not as bioavailable to the dog. And it's actually not available to a cat if you think that olive oil or um, you know certain vegetables will supply your cat's um, omega-3 need that's not the case you'd have to go for some fish broth or something um, animal based uh, in the best case um, so fish oil is not great in my opinion I wrote a blog about it a while ago um, there's many many issues with fish oil apart from the fact that it's usually going rancid and oxidizes and whatnot um, it contains, you know, pollutants and stuff. We don't know where the fish is from that's in the fish oil. We don't know how old it is. We don't know what kind of fish it is. I feel like there's way too many question marks with fish oil and also some studies that prove that it causes oxidative stress to the cells, which adds to possibilities of cancer. But now, like, let's not go um, crazy. I just think fresh options of omega-3 are much better than capsules. Um, the fish, uh, again, like we spoke that are good for omega-3 are sardines, of course, are the oily fish. Um, if you make fish broth, don't go for oily fish. Go better for, um, go for um, lake fish heads and stuff like that. That would be a good idea for bone broth. Um, 
oily fish like um sardines and mackerel have especially much omega-3 uh if you can't sauce them fresh if you don't want to like cook them if you don't want to get it dehydrated from us then you can always again uh try for canned sardines or canned fish that is packed without any masala that is packed with only water um yeah, then there's also a couple of other nice ideas to add some variety in the nutrients and um, omega-3 and those things. For example, you can add marine algae, like any seaweeds, basically. Kelp and spirulina are quite easily available, I think. Um, then you can do poultry gizzards that actually have omega-3. And emu is also one of the rare meats that has um, some omega-3. Try to mix it up wherever you can you know it's also give some plant-based omega-3 give some this some that as much variety and opportunity as possible um lamp brain yeah that also contains slight amounts of omega-3 but it fish is definitely a much more available source and a much more significant source uh, the next thing that i'd like to talk about is protein so that's clearly like a whatever kind of a thing like yeah protein is good whatever but we do have to talk about protein because as much as it's <coughs> excuse me a general thing that it gives us also a lot of options to supply it so um protein basically breaks down into amino acids which then can be used by the body to build new um to build and maintain muscles and tissue and whatnot that support the joints and other stuff in the body of course so even if your pet has like some sort of issue or some sort of disposition, again, feeding fresh and whole and good quality protein, whether that's dehydrated or home cooked or through any other way, is always a good idea because it helps them build strong bodies. It build, builds them, how, sorry, it helps them build a strong framework for everything so that even when issues pop up, they kind of have a good defense mechanism. Um, Next thing is uh, hyaluronic acid. It's another one that we hear quite a lot in skincare commercials. Um, again, it's one of those things that plump up your skin and um, it's kind of like a gel-like substance. Um, it's present in the whole body, uh, mostly in the eyeballs and in the joints. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of like for lubrication because it uh, binds to water molecules. So it becomes like this jiggly kind of jello paste um, and it gives lubrication to the joints, of course, so that they can um, move freely and it's a shock absorber as well, a natural one. Um, hyaluronic acid also helps in the growth of cartilage, of course, and it helps the renewal of cells as all good nutrients do. And it does reduce inflammation because it um, kind of moisturizes tissue because it binds to water so well and it um, just keeps tissues hydrated, which, which also helps them be less stiff in the joints. Um, and hyaluronic acid actually in recent studies has shown to help dogs with acid reflux because um, it helps patch up the lining of the trachea as well. So... Um, yeah, you can you can find hyaluronic acid in leafy greens, which of course greens always have to be mashed or um, uh, yeah. So vegetables, any kind of fruit or veg has to be processed, meaning has to be boiled, steamed, ground, shredded, whatever it is, for your pet to be able to absorb nutrients from it. Your dog is better at that than your cat, of course, because cats are um, carnivores, obligate carnivores. Dogs can get some more nutrition from uh, plants, but again, you have to process it somehow. So uh, leafy greens, if you just grind them in a mixie, like make a nice little chutney, or if you just um, boil it and make a mash or whatever, then tracheas and skin have a lot of hyal hyal hyaluronic acid. Um, bone broth and bones, again, contain hyaluronic acid as well as protein, glucosamine, whatever. Uh, so <clears throat> there's a lot of options to um, include that. Then there's uh, something else about citrus fruit, um, for example, oranges or something. They contain a flavonoid which actually prohibits the activity of an enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid. So um, citrus fruit like orange don't contain hyaluronic acid, but they help in maintaining hyaluronic acid in the body. 
and they carry plenty of vitamin C and vitamin C plays a crucial role in the development of collagen. So there's the full circle moment. Um, just, you know, adding some orange juice or something is, is always a good idea for the joints. You can also find vitamin C in seaweeds and kelp and parsley and liver and in fish. Um, yeah, one of the last things is antioxidants, also quite important. Um, they generally boost immunity, um, they help the body fight inflammation and pain, and you can find antioxidants easily in berries, um, in papaya, in raw honey, uh, cinnamon, turmeric, broccoli, apples. Um, if you feed these vegetables raw and shredded or juiced or whatever, then you also get the benefit of digestive enzymes and antioxidants and vitamins and all of that good stuff. And um, hemp oil is also a great addition and also a good powerful antioxidant. Um, helps to manage pain and inflammation as well. Um, just if you do get hemp oil, try to go for the full spectrum kind because full spectrum is made from the whole plant instead of just from the seed, which is uh, considered better and gives you more benefits. Um, last thing, um, yeah, what can be given for UTI? I see the questions this, there. Um, well, for UTI, again, that's what we spoke about with the leaky gut. I mean, I'm not diagnosing here. Um, of course, I don't know the exact issue, but often UTIs are in an inflammatory response um, because of an imbalance in the diet. So unless your dog is in pain or you um, have a, um, I don't know how severe everything is, of course, I would say try to feed in anti-inflammatory foods, uh, detox a bit and um, try to, you know, get over it like that before going for the antibiotics. And um, if you do go for antibiotics, try to feed food that helps the gut like bone broth, like um, some of the raw berry mash, uh, some, you know, detoxing stuff like shredded apples. Try to try to help your pet with whatever, um, with whatever you can in your situation. Thank you so much for being here with Kian Suchisma. Well, I, well, my pronunciation of the names. <clears throat> um, yeah, UTI, da da do. Different ways to detox. Yes, one second. Let's. Um, I want to say like one small paragraph about how to keep your dog busy when they have joint issues. Um, but then I will go to uh, different ways to detox and natural remedy hardworm. Okay, so um, for exercises, when your pet has um, issues with the joints or any kind of pain, then of course you can't let them run as usual and beyond like the typical thing that you pad the area where they move around. You can also find activities that are good for them. Um, yeah, of course, swimming, but like stuff at home that you can do with them to keep them busy and happy and not remind them so much of their pain. And um, there is stuff. For example, you can do easy nose work. Just hide treats around the house or toys. Um, make simple toys like by just knotting up an old sock or whatever and putting some treats and let them go at it done. Um, you can teach them small tricks, you know, like lie down or like hide or, you know, whatever. Maybe not exactly stand, but little tricks, uh, building the confidence, building the bond. Then you can, um, yeah, of course, go swimming. You can always go for a trainer like um, Dr. Devanchi, who's also here on Instagram or Mitali or like there's many uh, good trainers out there who can help you, help you specifically, of course, with activities for dogs with joint issues. Um, <clears throat> sorry. My uh, last one is chewing. Chewing is so great for joints, not just because of the nutrient supply, not just because of the mental and dental and uh, all the benefits of it, but also because if you look at your pet chewing, right? Like they hold the chew with the paws, which is not that easy. If you don't have fingers, try to hold on to a small chew and get the right bite on it. Um, it's not that easy. It takes a lot of flexing. So when your dog is chewing, they're flexing and your cat, like they're flexing their entire body, like they're twisting their spine and flexing it all kinds of funny ways. And um, it's a good thing, like the chewing not only tires them out, it's also an actual workout that doesn't strain the joints. Um, and it's a little cheaper than going swimming. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if you know which foods to go for and stuff, then you can come up with a good kind of whole picture of what activities and foods you need. If 
your pet has severe issues, then yeah, swimming might have to be the case. If you have a pet that is just like showing some sign of inflammation, you can just try with a diet and some, you know, some less activity in, in the daily life. All kinds of things you can do. Um, now, yeah, detoxing. Of course, for detoxing, one of the things you always can do and which you actually typically for a healthy dog should do is fast them for 24 hours. I know it's hard and I know they cry and they're like pavam and cute, but it's completely perfectly fine for a dog to um, be without food for 24 hours. They can handle it no matter how cute they seem. Um, if your pet is not ready for that, if you're not comfortable with it, if your pet is, you know, often the small breeds have um, acid reflux or like bile throw ups, if they don't get to eat enough or like if you're just not comfortable with the idea of fasting them, then do a liquid diet for a day, you know, some like rich bone broth. Um, some, you know, even pumpkin mash, like you can just figure it out, like what's what you're comfortable with and um, try to give them less digestive work, maybe basically for uh, one day out of, you know, maybe twice a month, maybe once a month, depending on what works for you. Um, another good way to detox is um, indigestible fiber, of course, that could be um, your dog that likes to chew on coconut husk, that could be um, a bunch of um, shredded apples or it could be a furry chew or a furry treat from us or that you feed um, <clears throat> yourself. So uh, all these things have in common like the, they're just voluminous, just like from the, the, the way that they are, they're voluminous and they have bristles kind of, right? Whether it's feathers of fur or it's shredded carrots or it's um, any other kind of like fibrous thing that it'll scrub through the intestinal lining and it'll just by that kind of detox um, the intestinal lining and can even scrub off worms if there should be any attached to the intestines. So there's two ways to detox that are great. Um, yeah. Then, well, heartworms is a bit of a um, bigger topic because it's um, not like a typical parasite and it's... Um, develops over time um, I <clears throat> well it's it's more of a like general answer here because they for hard one you kind of have to focus on the immunity just like that you have to um, kind of make sure the reno system works well and the gut is healthy but in my last life on deworming I spoke a little bit more about hard one if you want to go back and watch you watch uh, how safe are bully sticks for dogs well, bully sticks are pretty pretty easy to digest, pretty um they're pretty basic too. Like they have all the good stuff, like they're sturdy, they're big, they're um durable, they don't smell much, they don't look weird, and they um are worldwide available. I think it's one of the most popular chews in the entire world. Um if you have a dog that tends to gobble, it is annoying, but um even if they do tend to swallow the end, then doesn't cause any um, big upset because there's no sharp edges or anything. There's no big blockage. It'll just, you know, kind of like glide through and then be pooped out. Um, if you do have a dog that tends to gobble, you can do something like uh, with a Canon India puzzle, you could get the twist and then in the little opening at the top, right, it's like a twist. And at the top, you could add in like a long carrot or something so that they can swallow it because the carrot or something long like a stick or something like a wooden stick something like that to keep them from gobbling but um the pizzle is even a safer thing to gobble basically uh what for kinds of fresh raw bones can we give to dogs well edible bones would be great like if your dog is okay to eat raw then i would go for bones like um chicken feet clearly always uh duck like any poultry feed duck feed chicken feed turkey feed whatever feed <laughs> um then in general trotters are also great like cow halves buffalo trotters pork, trotters, and any kind of feed. They have a lot of keratin, they have a lot of glucosamine, that's great. Um, you can do wings and necks are always great. Necks are great for beginners because they have tiny player bones. Um, you can do, you know, raw trachias as well. Like you can get them dehydrated or you can get them raw where they're more like rubbery and stuff. Um, I would be careful with, like knuckle bones are also great. Be careful with like big femur chew bones and big, um, Big recreational bones, always monitor your pet and make sure that when they come apart that you 
uh, take away if anything falls off. Like those are not edible bones like a chicken wing would be. But still, always monitor your pet, of course, especially if you have a cat or something, then, um, you know, chicken wing is quite the big, big thing. Uh, anyway, can we fast a nine month old puppy? I do not feed, uh, do not fast puppies. Um, I would say after about a year of age or something, you can start. Uh, you can go for like a more bland diet or something for a day with a puppy. You can do a veg day, you can do a liquid day, you can do a mash day, you can do like, um, you know, different things. But I would not go and fast a puppy and never feed a nursing mom, of course. Though the fasting is for healthy, average, normal dog, like no extra condition, no nothing extraordinary happening just just to be very sure that I'm not giving you the idea that um you know it's different show 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 uh remedies for constipation cause due to my bone on a certain day well that's easy just give some more organ <laughs> I mean it's like um two minus make a plus right you just if you feed too much bone there's a little bit much calcium it's not bad like it's not it's not a bad thing it's fine it just goes through um but if you can feed some um liver like just add an extra chicken liver to the food and then uh that'll make stool a little bit softer and then it'll even itself out or you can do some like um a little bit of ghee you know something fatty to make it or just some banana stuff like that you know um i think would be easy um let's go hi sapna hi aj hi 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 me tash you take a thing to my fish but i just want to Oh, that's okay. That's amazing that you care for her. Um, so Mitesh, so you say your dog is blind and she has uh, stopped having water. So uh, I think an easy way to do it would be to add something that smells delicious to the water. That could be some, you know, um, I mean, it might be hard if she tries to pick out like shredded chicken or any other food. Um, you could always go for one of our powders, like the bone powder or some, whatever, um, any powder, lamb tried food booster and mix just a little bit of that with the water. So she smells it, knows where it is, and she can't pick out the stuff because the powder will dissolve. Maybe that would be an option. Or you could add like just a little bit of, you know, broth or something yummy to her water so that she smells it and, and, um, goes for it. Um... <laughs> Thank you, good night. My regards to Muffin. Ah, okay, great, Mitaj. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, If she's getting bored of it, I would just switch out the powder, probably. Um, Or just, you know, you could also make ice cubes. Like, I don't know um where you are and how warm it is where you are and stuff and how she reacts to that, you know, under all those conditions. You could always, um, what I like to do is make some like little ice cubes for the doggies with, um, you know, stuff inside that they like. If there's a shredded chicken inside, you can be sure that um, mine will like tear through the ice cube, swallow it and just, you know, have the chicken. So whatever your pet, uh, whatever your girl likes, try to maybe add that with water. Maybe make sure that there's more um, water in the food as well, stuff like that, you know, just try, try. Um, okay. So, are there any more questions that I missed? Hi, Kaveri. <laughs> um, let me just go check back. Check, check, check. I think I didn't miss any questions. How proud of you of my time management today. Um, raw bones, bully sticks. Okay, um, if there's nothing else that you'd like to ask, I think today we can close this up without rushing like crazy um yeah i don't know what else do i do at the end of this maybe um check my last video blog on um ha there's a question <laughs> how many deodorant times listen okay so guys this is a little bit difficult sometimes when i get asked how many pieces of this how many spoons of that um it is it it depends on the whole diet it's not like it, it's a little bit like how many pieces of you know apple can i eat a week it depends like if you don't eat any other fruit aka if you don't feed any other fish then it's good to give like a sardine a day uh, i know you have a big dog diet so um i know that um 
he needs a little bit more. He would probably be fine with two to three sidelines as well. But it's it depends on you and it depends on um, the rest of the diet. So I would say if you just make sure that there's a constant two to three times a week that he gets a little bit of fish and sardine, then that's fine. You don't have to go much more unless you see any issues, then up it, you know? It's all very individual. Uh, yeah. Or you can mix it like, uh, like Kunal is saying. And, ooh, whiskeys, sooty. I do have some fabulous drops coming in March and I am like, in March? No, by the end of February. Yes, late February. I am so excited. Like I am literally like, why did you ask me? I'm gonna tell everybody now. It's I'm really excited. Like it's unexpected and it's awesome and it's it's creepy, just like you would expect, but better. Um, and okay, anything else? No. We. I'm happy if it's helpful. Boiled chicken egg with shell, boiled or unboiled. Yes, Kuna, you can give it boiled, you can give it unboiled, whatever muffin's fine with. Um, yeah, you can grind the shell, you can crumble it. I'm lazy, so I just like kind of squish the eggshell into the food, you know, swirl it up. And if they leave it, they leave it. Some pieces they eat, I don't care, whatever, you know. Um, they make their own balance anyway, and they don't need to eat the shell every single time they eat an egg. Like, um, Yeah. So, but that's what I do with my um, kind of less affair approach to my own dogs. Um, you can just crumble the eggshell. I, I doubt that he will uh, eat every single eggshell all the way, all the time. So that's why I'm saying might make more sense to take it off. If you can keep the membrane and the food, take the eggshell, grind it, crumble it, and put a little bit in the food. Thank you very much, Shavani. Green lip masses for nutrition and dime pen. Yes, I did speak about that for um, a little bit. I think maybe you joined after that. But if you rewind at like uh, after like 10 minutes or something, I have a whole thing about green lip muscles and what I'm thinking about them. And now I think I'll uh, close this so that we um, can save it. And then as always, you know, you can talk to me. You can go to our cool new thingy on the website where you can press talk to Julia and then you can schedule like a like a conversation with me and all of that um, and you can Instagram us and you can we have a forum on the website now where we answer questions and like that you can like community questions and I answer them and then the community can answer them and all these things and ideas just check it out check the website I always hide new products and sales and functions somewhere in the back there I'm, yeah, I'm also sneaky like my Indies. <laughs> okay, dogs, um, thank you guys so very much. You know that you're like literally everything to me. I mean, of course, first my dogs, then you. Um, Shavani, one real talk back. You have um, a whole hour of me blabbing on about deworming and natural um, anti-parasite stuff, and you can skip through it. That's the good part in the pre-record okay thank you guys so much have a awesome thingy how do i get out of the life i don't know okay bye bye have a beautiful night <laughs>